Hello world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Riva Dorsey here. And this is Frida Riva Dorsey here. And this is our California oak. Uh, I've had this guy a couple of years. Um, I acquired it from a local collector who acquired it from the grower. Uh, the backstory on this tree was uh, a nurser started uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of oak trees, and um, years down the road, uh, like a hundred acres or something, right? And then years down the road, his wife sells their nursery after uh, and uh, some of his trees along with that nursery uh, when she retires. So. Uh, this was uh, evidently like, I don't know if it was pick of the litter or what, but this was one of those trees that was grown by a nurser at, to be a bonsai from uh, a bunch of uh, seeds that he had started. So this would have been a, a bonsai from seed oak tree. I think it's about 38, 40 years old. It's not a 50 year old tree because we don't get acorns from it. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I got the tree, it had a ready for local show state. It was it was show worthy. It was ready to go. And then along with my cork bark and a few other trees and a few other trees around here in the neighborhood. It wasn't just me and it wasn't just my, my bonsai trees. It was other people's bonsai trees too. We all went through some kind of black death thing that had me pruning back heavy. Just knocking this thing back to... Um, it was it was sad. So last year we uh, started feeding and started uh, uh, just building back. And um, I would say we were well on our way. We got a lot of good secondary uh, uh, foundation and, and secondary branches going uh, from summer last year uh, because it came back with uh, came back so strong. So this year it's already started and I have done something this year, a couple of things. A couple of things I've done this year that, um, that I hadn't done in the past. This thing has such rough bark and it's so sturdy that a lot of times if you see something that you're not crazy about keeping, you can just kind of give it one of those. And that's like hitting it with 400 grit sandpaper. I mean, you know, something 40 grit sandpaper, something that's got big, huge rock. In, it. in other words, it's easy to to rub off anything you don't want to keep. Uh, this year, I let this stuff go a little while. I mean, it's not even spring yet, but this stuff has been going. Uh, this this tree has been budding out for about th almost a month, just it, this long, however long this is. And because I'll let this stuff butt out, and because the roots are going to town down there, I can tell it's starting to get a little bit slower to water. So that, and it was heavy when I lugged it in here. So it's like, yeah, where'd all that come from? Uh, it's bulking up. This year, my deal is I intend to not go clipping back secondary and tertiary as quickly as I did last year. By doing that last year, some of those branches would get so long and I'm going, I don't want to cut it back. I wanted to enjoy the energy of that all year and then maybe cut it back. But if I let it continue it the way it's continuing, it's going to get too fat to be what I want it. You know, it'll look weird. So uh, kind of keeping that in mind and trying to, you know, trying not to let uh, too many um, bar branches go or too many things going up or down or whatever. So we did a fair amount of pruning last year, even though we were wanting everything to flush out. But we, we kept it back, held it back to things that would cause us problems if we allowed them to continue. Everything else, we just kind of let go. And we let it get as long as it needed to until we started thinking that it would start getting too fat. And then we would start cutting it back to nodes. And then a lot of times that would viper cave off and then we got like a, um, tertiary out of several branches that way but this year I let things run down here a little longer than normal and what that did is it fattened up it gave us some pretty fat hips here which are which is good to see I'm um, I'm all for that 
and also when I was looking at the tree bare bones, so to speak, after we had lost a lot of our canopies, you know, this thing should be, this thing should be, you know, out, out here a bit. And when we lost a lot of that, I also started thinking that over the years, the tree had gotten, it, our, our lowest branch was, uh, was this guy right here. That was our, still is. So, this isn't a Louisiana oak, but where I come from, the branches a lot of times would be down almost, you know, well, maybe even a little lower than the first third of the tree, and it wouldn't be nothing to see an oak tree with a branch way, you know, at somewhere out here, it would just kind of start running along the ground. Maybe not laying completely on the ground, but it would skip, you know, rest on the ground, and then it would, sitting on the ground, it would try to get some length going and point back up to the sun, and then that would go for a while. And they just, you would see oak trees that had huge branches that just ran along the ground like that. So I'm not really looking to go that wild, but I was thinking that compared to what I'm used to, this guy did look a little, a little top heavy. And I was looking at it and could see where styling cues had, had happened over the years. Uh, there was some cut paste over this. There was, that was evidently a branch. So was that, you know, the looks of that, that was a nice size branch a fairly nice sized branch that came out right here at some point and somebody either either that had died back or somebody decided it was too low i kind of get that but i'm thinking that some of these guys down here some of these starters these guys are going to be keepers i'm i'm going to incorporate a little lower stuff into the tree this year uh, but I'm not going to keep this much longer. There comes a point where if I let that stuff get, uh, if I let that stuff get much bigger, I'll have to start uh, putting cut paste on it once to clean to clean it up. I don't I don't want to leave any uh, I don't want to leave any noticeable scars where I've removed this stuff. Uh, normally I can just kind of go over it like that and it's it's gone just pretty much that simple this um there's a tiny little branch there that is actually positioned well for what i had in mind this one's a little bigger so i'm not going to cut either one of those i'm not going to make a decision about either one of those in fact i'm pretty sure at least one of those i will keep because that's kind of what i'm talking about i'd like to lower the the profile of the tree just a little okay and then what you see me doing is what I'll just continue I'll let this get thick enough to where I can't even hardly see where it starts in here but yeah we'll take a minute and start clearing these guys out But that did, it helped us, uh, that helped us fatten up our trunk quite a bit. Also, uh, starting last year, uh, about the time that we came out of our, uh, well, after I went through the bout of dieback, I learned quite a few things. And one of the, I learned two things that would, that would change. I had been dragging my feet a little bit when it came to, uh, when it came to uh, plant food and nutrients and and all that kind of stuff. So I started watching some lessons on that. And I think I've got the questions I had about it, I had answered. So I feel better about that makes it easier to do something. When, uh, if you have something that worries you about it, you're able to address those concerns and find out Find out whether or not they're legit, whether whether or not there's an you know a way around it, or whether or not it's unfounded. Or in uh, this case, uh, I was uh, knew that I needed to feed, felt like I needed to be feeding, so I would do it sporadically. Uh, but there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason to it. I would just not feed until I felt bad about it, and then go through and feed everybody. Uh, you don't want to do your pines that way 
and I could be it could have been feeding these guys, uh, for instance, this oak, um, a lot earlier in the game when I had it. Uh, now, what I was worried about was their bonsai trees. They're supposed to be small. There was a certain amount of, you know, teaching way back in the day that everybody would get small leaves or small trees by keeping them starved and near death. I don't think that's necessarily, uh, I don't, I don't, I would like to think that there's always a, another way to get desired results out of a tree. I, I do recognize that some things do like, there are trees that really do well when they're restrained a little, you know? It's like uh, um, having them, you know, there are trees that like competition, you know, they, they like, or, or plants, I should say, that like competition. So if you plant a bushel of them, they, uh, they don't, they uh, grow healthier. They don't just like grow tall and, and anemic trying to compete one another. They actually can thrive by that. So, you know, there's different strokes for different folks and all. But um, I think that's, that's about all I was looking to do on that. I cleared up the stuff on the base. I do want to commit to memory that unlike years past, this guy is going to be able to stay with this is coming out of the crotch. So that was kind of what I was showing. All I had to do was just kind of push it into the main trunk. And that was so rough that just kind of tore that up. Those are, those are coming out of the, yeah, we'll get rid of that too. All right, so don't go all crazy. There's a lot of, a lot more stuff this year I want to see grow. I'm not going to be as picky about uh, pulling stuff back to see if it's secondary or tertiary. Um, we're not forgetting that we're just one year out of this tree having a big, huge episode. And um, it's never really seemed to look weak after that. It's, you know, when it came time to grow, it just would just take off. But um, I got to keep in mind what happened. And this year we're going to um, try to let all of this new stuff that's growing be uh, new stuff and let it grow longer and get longer and um, get fatter and make more leaves and make more chlorophyll and make more photosynthesis and make more food and make more sugars and do all that stuff before we get into fall and when things slow down. And it's an evergreen, so it's not going to, it just kind of, um, it doesn't, it's an evergreen, so it doesn't drop all of its it doesn't drop all of its leaves in the winter. But what it does is it just kind of just stops putting out as many and slows down. It does go dormant. The leaves that it have has don't seem to have the same defense mechanisms that the other does because the tree's kind of dormant. So by spring, a lot of times that growth is looking a little yellow or ratty or something. But then it just boom bounces right back. And this is probably the second flush. All of this stuff here is new, is new growth. All of this is new growth. All of this is new growth, and it's already getting, it's already getting uh, surpassed by that new salmon-colored stuff that's coming out. So, yeah, that's that's goddess. I'm just gonna let all the rest of that go and, and give back energy. I'd like to see this guy, I'd like to see this guy get a canopy going again. It's not, um, it's not ever going to go leafless to where in the uh, winter we'll be able to see um, some sort of bare bones um, structure. But uh, this tree does have good structure when we allow it to. And I think at this point, I should just be able to, to get it back out into some, into some nice shape. And then maybe we can, and then maybe I can look at um, refinement more refinement piecemeal you know look at something in there and go yeah i can cut this now and we'll just do a comb over here and then that won't show as much while we're waiting on you know uh as opposed to what i saw last year that was just heartbreaking to see this tree to look like that but uh it will be nice to see it to see it have a full uh to have a full canopy again all right that's about all i was going to do to this guy uh our top looks pretty good. We're not going to mess with anything else. All the rest of that can just 
can just run and grow. We're continuing, we're continuing our feeding. Um, the tree gets a lot of water because of the weather pattern we're in right now. But if it were not getting a lot of water, I would still be giving it and the cork bark a lot of water. They both like that and they both like a lot of food. Uh, but when I say a lot of food, I'm not over fertilizing them. I, uh, make sure that they always have uh, doses every square four inches of uh, bio gold, which um, bio gold is five 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 as far as its um, which as far as its proportions and its numbers are concerned, and um, that's all single digits, of course. And uh, a dose of it would be like three little cubes to the palm of your hand, or four square inches. So a lot of times I'll see those at about the time they're used up. I'll uh, play those out. That also uh, is kind of answers the question of how I got away with not having a lot of, uh, I, I didn't find a good mycorrhiza for my pines whenever I first started rolling on those. And what I found was, was that after I'd throw with the bow roller, I didn't so much need it. That seemed like that was happening a lot more. Or it was facilitating that a lot more. So yeah, that's what's going on there. So yeah, well, uh, plus continue on the feeding and just a little cleanup here. We'll let all of that stuff go and be a canopy again. And our next drop will probably, um, we might break, we might drag something in tonight and do something and do something um, else tonight. This is pretty early in the day. The video that we dropped yesterday is doing pretty well. I kind of don't want to mess with it because it's, it's running up some numbers and, um, good numbers especially for us so i probably would do i don't know what i'm saying this video that we're watching now is probably going to take a minute to drop because of the storms that are offshore starting to turn their way in and i'm watching my bandwidth go down as that happens like i like go from watching uh videos on high def to um lower and lower and lower bandwidth numbers just because that's all we get um and I'm thinking that'll probably slow this video's production down when it comes time to upload it. That's not neither you or by the time you see this, that will have already happened. So thank you so much for uh, watching. This has been a cool little tree for me. Oaks really aren't hard to grow. They uh, can have, they can get the sniffles or you can have uh, catch some ailments. I, um, learned two things with this tree with the dieback situation that i had i learned a little bit more about uh feeding and fertilizing and i also uh learned to get on top of my uh systemic treatments which all of my trees now get twice a year um so yeah like and subscribe if you guys haven't already our next drop will probably be uh probably do a couple this weekend and maybe a short or two and thank you so much for watching